again, this is Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well. Now, big question for you, one that's debated in pubs around the land, what sort of bike should you go for as soon as you pass your test? This video is all about how to choose your first motorcycle. So exciting times then, you've uh, taken the plunge, you've, uh, you're in the process of learning to ride a bike, or you've just taken your test and you're thinking, right, I've got to buy myself a bike now. So first question to ask yourself, I think, is what are you going to use the bike for? Because it has a huge bearing on the sort of bike that you buy. Is it just for fun, for summer's evenings? Are you going to use it to commute on, to go to work every day, all day in all weathers? Are you going to be doing long tours on it? What are you going to be using the bike for? Get an idea of that in your head to start with. Then the next thing to do is just have a little think about um, engine sizes. Now this is the thing that um, seems to split opinions quite a lot. You talk to uh, 10 bikers and five will say one thing, five will say the other, in that you should, some will say that you should just get the bike that you want and get the size that you want. Others will say, start small and work up. Now I'm very much in the latter camp, in the start small and work up camp. I think it just makes sense that if you're new to anything that you should kind of uh, build your skills up on something that's uh, a little bit more sensible to begin with uh, and, then, and then work up from there. Now um, there are lots of arguments against going for a smaller CC bike rather than a large one to start with. Some people say you'll quickly get bored of a small uh, a small machine. Um, that may or may not be true and we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, another argument would be that um, you can't do long journeys on a small capacity bike. Well that's not really true. I, when I was learning to ride I did hundreds of miles on a 125. It was no, it was no problem. Um, it uh, is no doubt that it's easier on a bigger bike but, um, but you know it can be done. Look at um, Steph Jevons. She recently went around the world on a CRF 250. So um, you know when we're saying small bike it doesn't have to be a 125. I'm talking sort of um, up to 600 cc. Um, another argument is maybe you won't be able to keep up with your friends, they're all on litre bikes, you're on a 600cc bike. Well, I would argue again, if you're a new rider, you probably won't be able to keep up with your friends, whatever they're on, even if you're on a litre bike and they're on a 600cc, because they're just going to be more skillful. It takes time to build these skills, and I suggest that it, uh, it just makes more sense to build those skills on a slightly smaller bike that you're going to come to um, less harm on. Um, of course, it does depend to a degree on what sort of bike that you decide to go for. If, uh, you know, if you're going to go for a sports bike, then a 600cc sports bike is pretty hairy. Uh, on the other hand, if you're going to go down more the cruiser route, you could get a 1200cc Bonneville or something that may well be suitable for a beginner. So it does depend a little bit on the type of bike that you're going to go for as well. So that is, uh, deserves a little bit of thought. What about a big old adventure bike? They seem uh, very sensible, they're very popular, they're super comfortable, you can commute on them, you can do long journeys, they're good all-rounders. Why on earth wouldn't that make a great first bike? Well, to some degree, I agree. A lot of those attributes would do, uh, would be great on a, on a first bike, but uh, don't go straight to the top of the tree. This bike, the 1200cc BMW GS, it's massive. 1200cc, uh, regardless of the type of bike that it is, is going to be quick. And if you've never ridden a, a large bike any significant distance before, other than when you were learning, you're going to take a while to adjust to that sort of power. Do not be fooled by the fact that it's an adventure style bike. They are very, very fast. And I'm not just talking about the BMW, but any of these big adventure bikes that have got uh, engines that are over a litre. The other thing is these bikes are very, very heavy. Uh, it might be that you want to work up to something this weighty. How are you going to feel shifting it around in your garage? Maybe you've got a gravel driveway and you don't actually, or you haven't had experience of uh, moving a motorcycle in and out of your garage on a daily basis. And something like a big heavy adventure bike or a big heavy touring bike just might not be the thing that you can handle every day. Uh, the other thing is these bikes tend to be very, very expensive. And uh, supposing you make a mistake and you buy the bike and then you realise actually that's not the style of bike you want or that's not the sort of riding that you're going to be doing. You've then got a bike that you've got to get rid of uh, that's cost you a lot of money and depreciation comes into the fore. So it really does bear thinking about. I wouldn't advise a big over litre sized bike of any type, let alone an adventure bike as your first um, serious motorcycle after passing your test. How about a sports bike for your first bike then? These things are uber cool. Who doesn't love a sports bike? You know, when you're thinking about getting yourself a motorcycle, you're not thinking about something boring. You're thinking about something exciting. And let's face it, sports bikes are that. That's the bike to go for. Why not have one of those as your first bike? Well, lots of reasons, really. And I suppose it's not uh, sports bikes particularly, but it's just the exotic sports bikes. You may love the looks of an R1 or the BMW, or even the Panigale. And uh, there's no doubt, they are lovely, desirable machines. Uh, I agree with you, that's why I've got one, that's why I've got this one. But the thing is, these bikes, these big sports bikes, are weapons. And putting ones in the hands of a rank beginner, I just think is a recipe for disaster. 
it's exactly the same as a new car driver passing his test, leaving the test centre and jumping into a Ferrari. It's just not the thing to do. Technically you may be able to drive the Ferrari and you may be able to ride the litre sports bike but you're not going to be able to do it very skillfully and you can get yourself in a whole pile of trouble very very quickly. Don't forget that uh, your first motorcycle is very unlikely to be your last unless you get a litre sports bike. So you can work up to these things. And yes, bikes like this are beautiful and lovely to own. But uh, you know, it took me five years plus of riding other bikes before I decided I was safe enough to get a sports bike. So I would strongly recommend you against going the whole hog and getting a litre sports bike as your first machine. If it has to be a sports bike or nothing, then the good news is some of the manufacturers have brought out some uh, recent smaller CC bikes. So there are Yamahas and Hondas in the 300 to 500 cc bracket. Those will be the ones to go for if you must have a sports bike. I'm not here to be the uh, fun police uh, and say that you shouldn't get what you want, but you absolutely have to be careful. There's no doubt that uh, motorcycling is a dangerous pursuit, uh, and the li less experience you have, the more dangerous a pursuit it is, I firmly believe. Okay, so that's all well and good. You've got a rough idea of the sort of bike that you want to get and, uh, and the sort of size that you want to get. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, some people say you quickly get fed up of a, of a small bike and that, and that may well be true. So that kind of leads on to the discussion about should you buy new or should you buy second hand? Let me tell you what I did and, uh, and what I think I should have done in hindsight. I bought myself when I started to ride, I learned to ride on a 500cc um, Suzuki GS500. I thought that bike was a monster when I first got on it off of, off of a 125. Um, when I passed my test, I then went out and bought myself a brand new Yamaha XJ6, which was a 600cc machine. I absolutely loved it. It cost me, I think it cost me £6,800 brand new. Uh, it was quite expensive because I had luggage and all sorts of stuff put on it. And, uh, and I really loved the bike. And there's no doubt that 600cc machine completely let me learn my craft. I made lots of mistakes on that bike. If I'd have been on another bike, I think I would have come a cropper. Luckily, I had no, uh, I had no incidents and, and it was fine. And I definitely learned to ride properly on that bike uh, in the three months following my test. But that's the crucial bit. It was the three months following my test. After about three months, I did start to get fed up with that bike and I did start to crave more power. And, uh, uh, and that's where I made my mistake really. What I should have done was bought a second hand 600cc bike that once, I, once I'd uh, exhausted my learning on that, I could have sold it, not lost much money and moved on. As it happens, I sold my XJ6 six months after I bought it brand new. I think I sold it for 3,800 pounds, something like that. So I lost three grand in about six months absolute waste of money, shouldn't have done that. I learnt my lesson, I would never do that again. So learn from my, uh, from my example, get yourself a second hand bike, that way you don't lose money. Um, the other argument that I sometimes hear people say is, well, um, don't go for the 600, go for the 1000cc because you know, at the end of the day, all bikes can be ridden slowly. It's just down to what you do with your right hand. I get that, I absolutely get that. And, and um, I'm now in that position with a few years experience under my belt. But uh, when you're learning to ride and the thrill of the bike and so on, and, and, if, and even now, you can't always trust yourself to be that disciplined. You're on an open road and suddenly you want to wind the throttle open. You've only got to make a mistake once and it could be the last mistake you ever make. So, so don't give yourself that option, uh, would be my view. Get yourself a second-hand 600cc bike or smaller and learn your craft on that before you move on to something much bigger. Uh, that's my advice. Uh, as I say, there are many, many opinions on this and many different ways to do it. You're an adult, you can make your own mind up, but uh, that's just my feelings on it, my thoughts on the subject and what I would do if I were doing it again. I hope it's of some help to you. Okay, look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Fly. Cheerio.